On this first overreaction Monday of 2023, we'll talk about Jonathan Davenport winning every single race he competes in in 2023. We'll preview Chili Bowl night one, and there's an interesting situation brewing for some U.S. sprint car drivers trying to get down under. Let's go. It's Monday, January 9th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Two wins in two nights at the Wild West Shootout over the weekend was a resounding way for Jonathan Davenport to start the season and answer any questions we may have had about all of the changes that team made in the offseason. If you don't remember or aren't aware, Davenport's Lance Landers own team is starting 2023 with a new crew chief in Corey Fosvet, a new tire guy in Michael Bixby, and they've returned the shop to Landers Place in Arkansas following the departure of Jason Durham. And none of those changes seem to have slowed them down in any way. On Saturday night, JD started fourth and got to the lead for good following a lap 27 caution for Terry Phillips going around. On the restart, he threw a turn three slider at leader Bobby Pierce and was unchallenged from there in the clean air out front. Pierce later spun while battling with Brandon Shepard for second and finished 13th. B Shep did lock down the runner up spot with Ricky Weiss in third, Kate Dillard fourth and Kyle Larson in fifth. And then on Sunday, Superman took advantage of a front row start to lead early, but the action really got going late with Larson and Pierce also in the mix. Davenport survived multiple slider attempts from Larson down the stretch and drove off to the win with Young Money settling for second, Pierce third, and Bishop and Weiss rounding out the top five. Larson looked really strong late, but the challenge from Pierce and a couple of mistakes on a treacherous cushion allowed the 49 to get away at the end. JD said afterwards he was a little wore out after the battle with Larson and that the car was probably better than he showed. Both of the top runners were smiling on the podium, though, following the battle. And since it is an overreaction Monday, obviously Davenport is going to win every race this week, get the $300,000 bonus, and win every race all season long. Uh, For those of you rational human beings out there, though, I do think there are some interesting takeaways from these opening two nights. Besides the Davenport stuff... First, I think the change to Longhorns for both Shepard and Pierce did obviously not slow either of them down. Even with different track conditions each night, we had about the same top five runners, and Shepard and Pierce were right in the mix both nights. I think it's a good sign for both of their seasons. Uh, And obviously, Davenport is going to continue to be a serious problem for his competition, and the Lucas Field better be ready when that season starts here in a few weeks. Those guys have not missed a beat from 2022. As for the rest of the Wild West shootout, I would absolutely not sleep on Kyle Larson. Fifth on night one, second on night two, and that was with him not being super comfortable back in the car. Larson admitted after the feature last night uh, that Kevin Rumley had changed a bunch of stuff, and they were clearly pretty damn good. I think a few more changes, and they could get a couple of wins before this event is over. And if you remember back to the Friday show, this is what I talked about with Larson, giving these two, uh, Larson and Rumley, several nights on the same track, To get both the driver and the car dialed, I think is going to be a big deal. Larson hadn't been in a late model since last October, and he only made three late model starts over the final five months of 2022. Once he's really comfortable this week, look out. So yes, two nights, two wins for Davenport, but Larson and Pierce and Shepard and these other guys are just not going to roll over here. As for the other racing at Votto, Jake O'Neill and Derek Ramirez picked up modified wins over the weekend while Chris Jackson swept the weekend with the X-Mods. The event goes quiet tonight. Uh, There is a practice session on Tuesday, and then they'll be back to racing on Wednesday. The other late model uh, race over the weekend was the Ice Bowl at the Talladega Short Track, and it was a mess of a feature. The 50 lapper took nearly an hour to complete because of cautions. Guys running over each other, just ridiculous. Uh, And only eight of 24 cars were running at the end. Just six were on the lead lap. Ray Cook started 12th and survived the melees to win his third career ice bowl. Chris Jones and Will Roland joined him on the podium. Before we talk Chili Bowl, I've got two other things to mention today. First, it sounds like we've got an interesting situation brewing with a few sprint car drivers who are supposed to be headed down under to race this month. I've heard that Brad Sweet, Sheldon Huddenshield, and Aaron Reitzel are all having issues getting their visas approved and might not be able to make the trip. Reitzel's schedule was initially slated to start on December 30th at Eastern Creek and run through the Classic at the end of January. Sheldon was going to run races at Toowoomba, Avalon, and Borderline before the Classic, and Sweet had Avalon and the Classic on his schedule. I've heard they have lawyers involved, but as of yesterday, nothing had been resolved. As I get updates and hear more, we'll keep you guys posted. I know I've got quite a few of our friends from Australia and New Zealand who tune into the show, and having these three guys not down there would certainly be a bummer. Also, we've talked about the documentary coming from Flow Racing uh, that followed Kyle Larson around all of his 2022 season, and the trailer for it dropped over the weekend. 
The first episode of the series is premiering next Sunday, January 15th during the Wild West shootout. If you want to see the trailer, I'll link to it below in the video description. Lots of other drivers uh, are featured in this thing too. Uh, Team as Justin Grant and others uh, are involved in this, uh, at least this first episode anyway as well. All right, the 2023 Chili Bowl Nationals get underway tonight with the first of five uh, split field prelim nights. The building was uh, open all day yesterday for practice sessions, and if you missed it, we did a live stream yesterday morning and talked a bunch about the event, the Chili Bowl pool, and a lot more. You can check that out if you haven't yet. Today at the Expo Center, hot laps are scheduled for 4 p.m. Central Time with racing at 5. Looks like we should be in the mid to high 60s, I think, for car count tonight. Remember that drivers draw for heat rate starting positions, and then it's all about passing points from there. Drivers will either earn enough points to make a qualifier or be forced to DNC mains. The qualifiers will then decide who's locked into the night's feature or who's headed to a B main. And the top two feature finishers tonight, both first and second, will lock themselves into Saturday's big main event. Some notables who are running tonight include Nick Hoffman, Chase Briscoe, Kenan McIntosh, Gavin Boeschel, Shane Golubic, Ryan Timms, Jerry Coons Jr., and Chris Windham. We've also got our guy Tanner Holmes going tonight as well. The Monday schedule also includes the Race of Champions. That is a 25-lap main event. The field for that race is Tanner Thorson, Justin Grant, Tanner Carrick, Rico Abreu, Buddy Kofoid. Chad Boat's eligible, but I'm assuming isn't racing. Uh, Blake Hahn, Brennan Crouch, Zach Dom, Spencer Baston, Cannon McIntosh, Cody Swanson, Logan Seavey, Sammy Swindell, Tim McCready, Damian Gardner, Michael Pickens, Chase Briscoe, and Alex Bowman. And if you're going to participate in the Chili Bowl pool this year, don't forget that entries are due before hot laps roll off today. If you're looking for some possible winners tonight, I like both Golubic and Cannon McIntosh. Cannon Mack has two past prelim night wins, and he's going to be strong for sure. Golubic has led laps on his prelim night three of the past four years. Uh, he absolutely knows how to run top five in these events. The action all week, all the way through next Saturday night's feature, will be live on Flow Racing. That You don't have to worry about switching over to TV or anything like that. If you uh, are a Flow Racing subscriber and want to watch, this thing is live on Flow all the way to the end next week. If you need a Flow subscription and want to help out Dirt Tracker in the process, you can click the link below to get one or the links over at dirttracker.com. I think we are in for one hell of a week of racing. Speaking of the streaming schedule, four shows are on it for today. Uh, Flow Racing has day one of the Chili Bowl and Flow 24-7. Dirt Vision has the iRacing World of Outlaws sprint cars from Cedar Lake, also Dirt Vision now. If you want to see the full daily streaming schedule with those links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. All right, that's it for the show today. Hope you have a good Monday out there. Uh, enjoy some of the racing at the Chili Bowl tonight. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in today. We'll be right back here tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.